In this video, we're going to look at naming cycloalkanes. So to start, we're going to go through what the cycloalkanes are. Uh, cycloalkane is a closed ring structure um, with carbons at the corner of each side. So for example, the triangle structure has three carbons, and when we name it, we call this cyclopropane. So it's the same parent name, three carbons, we just add the word cyclo in front. So we have cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane. Those are the most common ones that you'll be dealing with up until a six-membered ring. Uh, it gets a little harder to draw them when you get up into the seven and eight-membered rings. So we have cycloheptane, cyclooctane, uh, and I'm not going to draw them because I can't. Um, but we would have cyclonone and cyclodecane. So uh, you won't be asked to draw these big rings. If you have to recognize them, just count the sides. So we're going to go through a naming example now. And we're going to use the conventions that we um, learned in the previous uh, video naming alkanes. So to start, we're going to pick our parent chain. So our parent chain is going to be our ring. So we're going to count the sides of our ring. In this case, our parent chain is a six-membered ring, so the parent here would be cyclohexane. Uh, we're going to also identify the groups that are coming off of this ring. So we have in yellow uh, an ethyl group, so that's a two-carbon group. In green, oopsies, in green uh, we have a methyl group, so that's a one-carbon group. And in red, we have a three carbon group, so that's gonna be propyl. Uh, when it comes to numbering, one of our carbons has to be number one that has a branch on it, okay? So we want the lowest possible sum for our branch um, locations. Uh, so I'm going to redraw the structure on the next slide and we're going to go through the different um, numbering uh, mechanisms that we could and see which one is our lowest possible sum. All right, so I've drawn um, six different structures because there's six different numbering motifs that could happen here. I'm going to quickly go through each one. So our first motif, we're going to start with ethyl at the number one location and then rotate in a clockwise direction, numbering around the ring. This gives us a sum of seven. So one plus two plus four. Uh, if we start at ethyl and go the other way, so going counterclockwise, uh, this gives us a sum of 11. So one plus four plus six. If we start at methyl and go clockwise, Uh, and this gives us a sum of 10, 1 plus 3 plus 6. We start at methyl and go counterclockwise. This gives us a sum of 9, 1 plus 2 plus 6. Uh, if we start at propyl and we go clockwise, that gives us a sum of 11, or sorry, 10, 1 plus 4 plus 5. And if we start at propyl and we go counterclockwise, that gives us a sum of eight. So looking at this, um, the lowest possible sum is going to be from this numbering uh, motif, where number one is ethyl, two is methyl, and four is propyl. If we had two that were equal, the tie goes to the first group alphabetically. Okay, so we're going to put this whole name together. Uh, we have our numbers, we have our group names, we have our parent chain name. So we're going to list alphabetically as we normally would. So ethyl is first alphabetically. So this is 1-ethyl, 2-methyl, 4-propyl. So I'm running out of room. So this, uh, we're not going to actually have a space here. Um, I just ran out of space there when I was writing. So 
no space between the word propyl and cyclohexane.